Welcome back, my friends, to another in the series, The Introduction to Bullying and Social Aggression. In this video, we're just simply going to very quickly talk about tips for prevention and intervention. Uh, some truths about bullying. Bullying will not simply go away. Bullying is an intentional behavior that requires, and then we list action. Uh, I, I can't say enough about that. Bullying is not going to just go away. You must act in order to deal with it. And some of the ways you can act, you can deal with prevention, which hinders it before it occurs. This is one of the better approaches. But if it is occurring, then you must have intervention strategies, which it is essential that you do that. Under, uh, under law, if you're a public school and a student reports bullying to you, then by law, you must intervene. And the prevention and intervention can be enacted by students, parents, and organizations. And in our discussion, most of the organizations we discuss will be, will be schools, but they may be churches. Any place where students gather and students participate, you have a potential for a bullying to occur, and those organizations need to have prevention and intervention strategies in place. Students can employ the following prevention and intervention strategies. Now, if you're a student and you're experiencing bullying, there's some things that you need to do. You must be your own advocate to start with. If bullied, tell your parents. Sometimes bullies like to communicate to you that the reason you're being bullied is your fault. The reason you're being bullied is because the bully has a problem. And telling and reporting that to your parents is not tattling. It is very important that you report it so that it can be, intervention can be enacted. Tell a trusted teacher, counselor, principal, or have your parents talk to the school. You can tell a Sunday school teacher, a pastor, a deacon in the church, but you need to report it. Don't retaliate or get angry. The bully wants a response from you, and if you can avoid a response and simply report it and let it be dealt with, that's the better approach. Oh, uh, Retaliation and, and not retaliating uh, goes against the upbringing of many individuals who are taught that you have to retaliate in order to take up for yourself. By retaliating, you may make the situation much worse and you may put yourself in danger. It's better if you could report it and let it be dealt with. When you face bullying, respond evenly, evenly and firmly or say nothing and walk away. If it's happening online, don't reply, but print out a copy of the post in their email and report it. Develop friendships and stick up for each other. All that is required for evil to prevail is for good people to do nothing. Also, uh, you'll notice if you ever watch TV and you see uh, uh, antelopes surrounded by lions, that the predators get those that are out on the fringes. If you can stay in the herd and you can build a herd, there, you'll be safer there. There's safety in numbers. You need to have friends. You need to band together and stick up for your friends. And, of course, you need a, an air of confidence, and we'll talk about that more later. But it's important that you be confident in yourself. That confidence sometimes uh, prevents the bullying from occurring. And if the harassment is happening on the way to or from school, then you need to intervene and take a different route. And you may have to explain to your parents, if I go this way, this is what's occurring so that you can get there a different way. You need to avoid the unsupervised areas of your school because this is where bullying is more likely to occur. And don't bring expensive items to school. In our society, many people seem to think that if you have things, that makes you important. Well, when you take those things and you flash them around school, you may put yourself in a position where you're more likely to be bullied. Parents can also employ prevention and intervention strategies. You have to encourage your child to share the problem with you with assurance that it's not tattling. Never, ever reflect to the student who tells you that they're being bullied that it is the student's fault that they're being bullied. The student is a victim and needs to be treated as that way, and they are not to blame for what is occurring to them. And you need to let them know that they can honestly and fairly communicate with you. You, as a parent, need to learn to praise and encourage your child a confident child is less likely to be bullied. A lot of research shows that uh, as a parent, you have a great hand in establishing the self-esteem that your child feels. And self-esteem, of course, leads to confidence. Help your child to develop friendships, and new careers can provide a new chance. As I told you a moment ago, there's safety in the herd. And helping your child build those friendships may 
uh, put you out a little bit. Uh, they may come over and stay at your house every now and then. That's always difficult, but it's just one of those necessary things. Your child needs friends, and in order for your child to have friends, you may have to help, and they need the right sort of friends. Uh, you need to maintain contact with your child's school and keep a detailed record of the bullying episodes and your communication with the school. Keep in mind that if that bullying is reported to the school, by law, the school must act, and you have a right to know what was done. It's pretty important, isn't it? So you keep track of that. If that bullying is occurring at church, then you make certain that the pastor's aware of it. You report it so that it can be dealt with, and you, have a, you, you insist that you know there what was done so that it might be corrected. Uh, encourage your child to participate in sports or physical activities to improve esteem. I'm a very firm believer in the role that athletics plays in building self-esteem and teaching leadership. Now, the thing that I hate about it is that it's not free, and I do understand sometimes that, that, that the cost may be outside of a parent's ability to provide, and I, I regret that. I hate that. I think that that's one of the social ills in our schools. Uh, those things should be equally available to all students, in my opinion. Of course, some will argue that, but they're entitled to be wrong if they want to. Uh, I took my sons into martial arts, and, and they learned not how to kick somebody's rear end. What they learned there was self-control and discipline, and it really did help their esteem. My granddaughter's in gymnastics. Uh, the issue here is that if you are an individual listening to this, you don't have kids, and you can help some kid somewhere be part of athletics and do something, then you need to do that. You'll be blessed for your generosity. Now, organizations can employ strategies to prevent and, and to intervene in bullying. Uh, by organizations, we mean schools, churches, anywhere where children can gather. You can establish a bullying prevention committee. You can create a long-term anti-bullying plan to raise school and community awareness. You can use anonymous surveys to students to assess bullying-related behaviors, and you can include parents in the planning discussion and action plans. I've posted all four of these together real quickly just to let you get an overview of what I'm talking about. Here you're talking about knowledge. And you're talking about conveying a message in the organization that bullying is unacceptable, that bullying will not be prevented. Here's how we're going to try to, uh, uh, to prevent it and then intervene if it occurs. We're going to involve the, the employees of the organization. We're going to involve parents in the community. We're going to build awareness. And, and bullying is not acceptable here. And then you need to establish classroom bull, rules against bullying and create positive and negative consequences regarding bullying. Uh, in my experience, uh, sometimes, you know, the, 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 the dealing with an issue is a little bit frightening. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, a church uh, have three young boys that banded together and they were bullying a younger child. And, and they, these were rough kids. Uh, they, they were really creating a situation that, that this child was afraid to come to church. Now, I ask yourself, is, is that acceptable that a child should be afraid to go to church or go to school? And, and, and the answer to that is obviously not, so it took action. Some of the action taken was, was pleasantly received by all three of the bullies were raised by grandparents, two sets of the grandparents were responsive and, and, and appreciated the intervention and, and tried to deal with it. The third did not. The third tried to be very confrontational and had to be told, this will not be tolerated here. Well, you're picking on my, no, nobody's picking on you. You're creating a problem by not, not supporting the rules that are here. This child will not be allowed to bully. Well, you know, sometimes it's hard to sit down and just look somebody in the eye and tell them the way it is. But consider the victim. Do you want that child to be afraid to go to church? Absolutely not. Do you want them afraid to go to school? Absolutely not. So sometimes negative consequences have to be enforced. The child in question, the, the, the grandparent didn't like it a bit, but the child didn't get to participate in some things. The child's behavior did not uh, 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 reach the level that the child could participate hate that, but the child made decisions and therefore negative consequences occurred. But also on the positive side, what about the, the students that change? What about those 
that respond. Well, you know, they need positive consequences, positive reinforcement of positive behavior. Uh, as a school teacher, I'm reminded of how prone we are to send uh, ugly letters uh, when we have negative behaviors, give calls, parents say, your child is doing this, that, or the other. Wouldn't it nice to get a call about something positive a child did? Well, you know, we need to positively reinforce with good positive consequences, positive behavior. And if we do that, then we will receive the benefits of it. And sometimes we have to initiate serious talks with bullies and victims of bullied in, bullying individuals. Uh, the, the, the bully and the victim may, may uh, will require that we sit down and that we have serious talks with them. The bully, to understand that you're not going to do this, it is not going to be accepted, you're already meeting this level of consequence, and it will escalate as this bullying continues. The victim, to understand that you are a victim, this is not your fault. We're here to help you, we're here to support you, and you have a free and open line of communication with us, and we will deal with this. Uh, I want you to remember just simply in closing that bullying will not simply go away. It requires action. Those actions can be in the, in the form of prevention. They can be in the form of intervention. Prevention to stop it from happening before it happens and intervening to stop it once it happens. And prevention and intervention strategies can be enacted by both the students, the parents, and the organization to include all personnel in the organization. Now, in the word of the old Trekkies, live long and prosper. In the words of the Hunger Games, may the odds be ever in your favor. I mean the first, live long and prosper from the bottom of my heart. The second, may the odds be ever in your favor, I mean only unless you and I are in the same event. Then it's ever man for himself. You have a good day.